six seasons or five seasons and he's never seen himself. Must be going crazy. Well, hence the, oh boy. Can, yes. I, can I just stop you for a second here? Uh, Natalie Cox has just said she's sitting up for an extra 10 minutes to listen to the end of At Nerd Following. Can I please come on and interview Scott Bakula with you? Okay. Let's do that. I'm all for Let's that. that. Let's make that happen. Let's do it. <laughs> so, so basically, this time, he leaps in and he looks kind of tired and he looks up at the mirror. that he's, he's in this bar and he looks up at the mirror and he sees himself looking back at himself and he's just like, oh boy. <laughs> we are aware and, of how the episodes end. <laughs> um, but, so he's, he's just, he's sitting in this bar and it turns out it's a bar owned by a, name, a guy called Al and there's a guy called Gushy uh, who's one of the scientists in the Quantum Leap program. There's a guy called Ziggy, who's another... He, that's the supercomputer that runs the Quantum Leap program. There's all these people that he's kind of met over the years, and he just doesn't know what's going on. And the thing is, he's leaped into himself on the day he was born, but he's not leaped into the baby him. He's leaped actually into his own timeline at the exact moment he was born. And at the Quantum Leap program, they can't actually find him. And eventually they find him, but he's already had this big conversation with the barkeep who, you know, I suppose you have to try and assume that he's some sort of ethereal being. He's supposed to be a god as such, or the god. And he speaks to him and he gives him this advice just saying, look, you've always been able to leap home. Every single time you've leaped should have been your last leap home. You could have went home at any time, but you don't want to go home. You want to continue helping people why did you set up the quantum leap program and he says he set up the the quantum leap program to help people that was his, his reason he wanted to change time but he doesn't feel that he's changed he didn't want to do one person at a time he wanted to do these big massive changes and he tells him well do you know what you've actually made these changes and starts telling him about the changes that he's made you know you affect one life who affects another life who makes the world a much better place and um, it, it, he eventually starts to believe this and then Al the hologram actually turns up because they eventually lock on his signal he turns up, he has a conversation with Al which you don't realise is a goodbye but it is Al goes and they're going to try and figure this out and he decides to leap and he leaps out and into himself back inside Al's wife's house when Al was in World War 2 and he was a prisoner of war and basically what happened with Al was he loved his wife, so he loved his first wife so, so much, and he went off to work, the World War Two, and he ended up as a prisoner of war, and he was, I think he was a prisoner of war for seven years and when he came back, his wife had moved on, she thought he'd died he, uh, you know, he had a KOI a killed, uh, KIA, killed in action and she thought he'd died so she moved on, she had a couple of kids with another man, and he turned up and he was never happy after that, he married a slew of other women, and he's kind of a bit of an adulterer uh, when you meet him in Quantum Leap but it was all this one moment that made him like that and Sam goes back to himself so he's, he's it seems like he's able to leap as himself in other places and he's in her house and she's dancing herself to a Ray Charles track I think it's Georgia and um, she's just dancing herself and he, he's like I'm sorry look, I'm not going to hurt you I'm one of Al's friends I just want to tell you, your husband is alive. Please wait for him. And then he leaps again. And the, it comes up telling you that Al ended up mad. He, he came back to his wife. They had a couple of kids. They've, you know, they both lived 40 more years with their kids. They really enjoyed their life. And then it just comes up black screen. Dr. Sam Beckett never returns home. And then your heart gets ripped out of the carcass that once was your living body. Now, I remember this. This was, I remember not being too old. I think I was in my early teens when this happened. And, you know, it was a show that I had been watching since I was a, a, literally a kid. Mm. Um, and every episode of Quantum Leap, it, it dealt with the big issues. It dealt with the racism. It dealt with homophobia. It dealt with single mothers. It dealt, you know, it dealt with big issues. It dealt with all, but it was always fun. It was always, you know, it was always exciting. Um, you know, Al was a great character. Sam, of course, is still to this day one of TV's greatest ever characters, um, and and but every issue, every episode, no matter how big the issue was, at the end it was funny. But I remember because it used to be on Tuesday night at nine o'clock, 
uh, and Tuesday night was a night when my dad used to work late and he would come home and he would watch TV in the living room and we had a small one of the little portable TVs in the kitchen and I would always pull the seat over and sit and watch Quantum Leap and I remember when that episode ended just sitting there for what felt like forever trying to get my head around the fact that not only had the series ended because it was I was gutted that Quantum Leap was over yeah. there was no internet there was no spoilers we didn't know there was no forum you, you didn't know this until you watched it Yeah, and I remember just trying to get my head around this character who we loved we, we loved Sam Beckett and we loved Al Calavici and the fact that it just never he just never got what we wanted for him for five years yeah. never happened and I, I it was like a gut punch I, yeah. I remember that being so powerful and you know to this day someone has actually tweeted us here who tweeted us um, uh, White Feather Media I sometimes find myself staring out of the window wondering where Dr. Beckett is now and you know what I I can sort of see that because you always think to yourself well if Al wasn't with him how would he know you know and if he if he screws up a leap does he get to do it again you know is he lost out there in time somewhere right now trying to fix something and he's trying to get his head around it you know what does he do you know there's just this whole it opens up this whole massive expanse of possibilities of what if yeah. and, and, and adventures and it's, it's so set in stone as well he never returned home yeah so where is he yeah he's out there somewhere timeless yeah, um, and that's and, so tragic. Yeah, but yet so hopeful at the same time. Yeah, because that perhaps he ended up with something more. And at the end of the day, he struggled for this all this time. He struggled this, and we were with him, but he gave it up for his best friend. Yeah, he gave everything up to to fix that one wrong. And uh, yeah, no, I mean to this day, it's still you know he he Scott Bakula was great in in Chuck. He was great in Enterprise. He's been great in pretty much everything he does. He seems to be one of the genuine down to earth type, type of people. Um, but he he will always, always he be Doctor Sam Baggett. Well, that's the thing, Mark. You said like he was he wronged the thing that once you know that he right he made right the thing that once went wrong, and that was the that was the the whole thing with the show was he was righting the wrongs in the world, and that was one of the biggest wrongs. His best friend never really got to be happy, and I think that that is the saddest thing. Mm-hmm. It's just that he he helps his best friend, and you know you always want to help those closest to you. And that is, you know, the ultimate sacrifice, sacrificing yourself in the middle of time just so that your friend can finally be happy. Yeah. No, no, it is. It's, it's very, very powerful stuff. And, of course, don't forget that there was a sequel series, a follow-up series to, to Quantum Leap almost happened um, where his daughter went looking for him. Uh, and I think they filmed the pilot episode. I'm almost sure they did film a pilot episode. Um, but it, 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 never, it never actually happened. But I'm glad that it didn't happen. Yeah, because as you say, the finality was there. Yeah, it told you he didn't get home, and that was it. And and it's such sad, a it's bad tragic. idea. Yeah, I mean, if they had have oh. fixed it, and yeah. oh, he's been found. It's all right. It's all good. It just would have lost that impact. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so it's 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 a good thing. It's a good thing. There's a bit a bit of bit of madness going on on Twitter here at the minute. Scott Bakula has been tweeted, um, <laughs> and please come on the show. And people are retweeting like mad. Let's get Scott Bakula on the show. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got The Force Unleashed 3. That's a campaign that's underway. Yeah. We've got Get Scott Bakula on the Fallen yeah. Nerd. Yeah. Right, what other campaigns are we running here at the moment? Anything else anybody wants? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, give um, us a tweet. Let us know what you want, and we'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah. I currently want this fly to bugger off from our studio. Nice. Um, right, okay, now this is it. This is the big one. This is number one, and I think we all knew Drum what this roll, was going to be. Because I, I read through this came up so many times. And then yes. there was times when it got somebody mentioned it, and it got so many likes. Yes, it you know, is of course Dirty Dan's death. It is of course, yeah. <laughs> um, right, it is, and you know what? This it's is Dan handing An- Angie the divorce papers on Christmas Day. No, wait, hang on, that's number one on another list. Hang on, <laughs> that's TV's greatest moment. Sorry. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's um, oh Al's re- retweeting here as well. Brilliant. <laughs> hang on, I'll get on Twitter and retweet too. Uh, Let's make yes. this happen. Futurama season four, episode seven, Jurassic Park. Seymour waits for his master. Right, you're going to ask me to explain the, the scene, and I don't think I can, <laughs> because I think I'll just break down in tears. Okay, do you want me to handle it, or...? Uh, Saxon, if, if you could... No, do you know what, look, you... can I just say, can I just say, I'll, we want some real emotion here, I want you to, to describe this scene. Yes, because I'm just a, an emotionless robot, aren't I? Yes. <laughs> Why don't you love me? <laughs> <laughs> no, Al, come on, go for yeah, it. Man. I, I'm not going to. We, we can't take your la, your big moment off you. Three weeks we've waited from this, brother. Work away. All right. Now, I was not. 
I'm never a big fan. I always thought The Simpsons was the better show. And uh, I sat down and kind of watched a load of it at one point. Um, it used to go on Sky One all the time. It was just like Futurama, Futurama, Futurama. And you could just sit down and watch the, the whole thing. I think that's I came actually the it. Sunday scheduling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I came across this episode and it's always stuck with me. I don't remember any other episode of Futurama. Just nothing ever comes to mind but this. Yeah. So Fry comes across, he's in a museum and he comes across a fossilized dog, which turns out is his old dog Seymour. And he's going to get it uh, cloned, as far as I remember. And he uh, goes to the doctor and I try to get it cloned and stuff. And I think, as far as I remember, one of the funny things is um, Bender kicks the dog in a, a lava pit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because he, he doesn't want his best friend to get another best friend. Yeah. But when the doctor tells Fry that the dog was 15 years old when he died, he's like, oh no, I don't want to clone him anymore because uh, he's 15, I had him... Uh, when I disappeared, he was three years old. He probably moved on from me. He got another family. He was happy. And then it does this flashback, and it shows you Seymour. And Fry leaves with his pizza and never comes back, and the dog sits there. And then, you know, the, he sits there through the seasons and through people coming outside and going inside and people going outside on their cell phones and leaving. And the, the actual owner of the pizzeria, he's coming out and he's feeding the dog a pizza every night and then you can see the, the dog and the owner of the pizzeria getting older and older and older and the seasons are passing and the years are passing and it turns out the dog sat there for 15 years just waiting on his owner to return and died. Yeah. And that is just, if you've got pets, that is just one of those things that it'll bring tear to a glass eye. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, I'm not a, I'm not a pet or an animal person really at all. I have fish, and that's about as as you know. Because I think I, I honestly, right? I think it's 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 fool's gold having a pet. Yeah. Because you know what? Eventually, they're going to die after a few years, and you're only setting yourself up for that yeah. heartache. And I don't see the point. Was well, you want know pets, or, or just for people who have failed at trying to get a relationship with another human being? <laughs> yeah, as, yeah as, that's <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I I'll say, been, yeah, not my words, the words of a famous comedian whose name escapes me, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, I, I, I have had many pets. I've been I've been labelled a sociopath and work. Okay, I'm so vocal. I can about this. see that. I, yeah, I know. Like, you know what? Here's the thing, right? Just on a, on, a, on another path. Some of the guys in work said you're a sociopath. Well, one person in particular actually told me to call me a sociopath, and I was like, I am not a sociopath. So I went on to Google and I was typing, "Is there a test?" For sociopaths, I did three of them. Yeah, I'm a sociopath. I think the test for <laughs> for being a sociopath is typing that question know, into yeah, Google. I think, yeah, I think because when that. you've reached that stage, yeah, I think that's pretty much sociopath. confirmation. Um, but yeah, I I I don't get the whole dogs. Before you know it, you'll be in a hotel room with hookers singing to studio. Right. You know, nice. That'll happen. Um, okay. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, I don't. <laughs> animals don't. Sorry, I went off on a, I, I images. Um, yeah, I didn't help either. Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> but this Another episode. Middle class problem. I remember watching this episode with with uh, my my wife now. She was my my girlfriend then. I remember watching this episode and just, I just I just needed a hug after this episode. Yeah, I just I wanted to cry. I just thought you know yeah. this is, and I have tried to explain this. I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago. I've tried to describe this episode to other people, and once they hear cartoon, they're just like yeah right. Yeah, they switch off. Yeah. But you know what? I I dare anyone to watch this. Whether you're a fan, you don't need to know the rest. All you need to know is that this guy's in the future. He looks back on his past. It's about this dog. Yeah. And the story of this dog, uh, Alan, as you say, it would bring a tear to a glass eye. It, if you don't cry at this or if you don't get emotional at this, you're already dead. Yeah, And it's the song as well yeah. that plays. The the song, it's like, I will wait for you, if mm-hmm. like even if it takes a thousand years. Oh, yeah, it's, the thing is, I mean, you don't even need to know anything about that clip of the dog over the fifteen years. It's just heart wrenching stuff. It's just you, you just can't seem to go over it. And as you, you know, you're not a pet owner, and it got you, so I can't see it not getting anybody. If it doesn't get you, you're officially dead. Yeah. I, I really think what gets you is the fact that the dog waited and Fry doesn't know. Yeah. And it's the fact that Fry was there. He he was so close to bringing the dog back to life, and the dog would have been so happy to see him again after all those years. And Fry decides, "Oh no, he wouldn't miss me. Just forget it." 
And it's just, it's it's that reveal that the dog did wait for him. Yeah. I don't know. Again, as you say, it's so hard to describe it, but it is such a gut punch. Just that final couple of seconds of that episode. Yeah, no, it is. It's powerful. It, it really is powerful stuff. But if- 